Welcome back to Wood Turning with Dick. This is purely a simpler way to do an off centre bowl. We have got a bit of ripple sycamore, not a massive amount of ripple in it, but there is some. We've also got a bit of French mapper poplar. And both of these pieces are the perfect size for making an off centre bowl. Slightly longer than they are wide. Now, let me show you. Let's take the ripple sycamore to start with. I'm going to call it ripple sycamore because technically it is rippled, it has got a ripple and it is sycamore. Rather than using that on a bit of wood, I'm going to use this on a piece of paper. Explain it a lot clearer because this is quite an important step. If you mess this up, then the whole thing gets messed up. It gives you a good visual representation of what your piece is going to look like in the end. So imagine this is your slightly longer than it is wider piece of wood. Find the good end of the piece of wood that you're working. Let's say you've got a few cracks in one end. Work from the other end. Find your bowl blank in the good end. Mark your middle. Bring these in a little bit. Come across, I don't know, three quarters of an inch, depending on the size of your bowl blank, obviously. Some, somewhere this side of the central point. And then open them up to a point that's big enough at the edge to either put a pretty pattern in the outside edge or just to have enough room to work with. And on this occasion, let's get a fattish one so we can put a mark in and around, as you'll see on one or both of the pieces that I'm about to do. Draw your circle, marking again the middle point. From that middle point, measure to the outside edge of that bowl, from the middle of this bowl, and then mark over this side because you'll be putting your face plate on around this central point. And therefore it's gonna be evenly balanced for weight if you trim any excess off. And there we've got a blank that we can put our face plate on. Right, back to the wood. So the next step, got your markings out, you've worked out where the dead middle is, flip it over, find the dead middle again. Gonna put a little mark there so that helps me identify where it is. And then you want a nice sacrificial piece of wood that fits nice and snugly and evenly, there's no rock, so it's nice surface to surface contact. You can go slightly bigger than this if you want to, but frankly, as long as it's big enough for a set of your chuck grips to squeeze onto once you've turned that round and put a little slant in it, then that's adequate, that's absolutely fine. I've marked that out with a pencil, enough glue on there to make sure it's a secure fit, not too much, but you know, I always like to do ample and then clamp that down and leave it the required time, 24 hours. Half an hour under clamp, 24 hours until it's fully gone off and take it indoors. Outside in a cold workshop, it's not gonna go off as quick as it should. People often ask that. On the packet, it will tell you. It will say how long the clamp time is and how long before it's fully cured. On this, it's half an hour clamp time, 24 hours fully cured. Because these blanks are only two inches thick, oh, the difference in weight. That poplar is so light, and this is quite a weight to it. Because they're only two inches thick, and even if they were three inches thick, I'm still inclined to do this, and that's drill my central hole for my worm screw, which I'm gonna use. Or if you, even if you're using a face plate, you can still drill a hole to about 12 millimeter shy of the bottom. And if you don't have a drill stand that can do that, you can just do it with a standard drill. Just drill down a bit, measure the depth, measure, measure the depth on the side, jackpot. And now face plate, worm screw, whatever's preferable to your way of doing. So I'm gonna use my worm drive. This isn't gonna be off balance at all. It's just like turning any ordinary blank. In theory, that's pretty well balanced. And you can just very quickly turn a chuck grip in the bottom. Now turn it round and hollow it out down to the bottom of the marker. Do bear in mind, don't go straight down too much because there's gonna be a curve on this outer side bowl where you're shaping it to round, well not round, you know, a nice curve which you're going down to the base. And if you've got the same thing going on here, but a, a deep step in, it's gonna come out the edge of the bowl and then the, the front of it's gonna come off, it's gonna be really ugly. So a gradual curve down, nice and smooth, and just pleasing to the eye.
think that's a nice gradual representation of the outside of the bowl when it comes. I've got quite a fat lip there at the moment. So I'm wondering if that's too fat. Oh, fine. I'll take it, make the bowl a little bit bigger, but not a lot. All right, I'm going to sand that down. Don't touch the front face. That's given me that bigger lip between the outside of the bowl, which is probably slightly inside that line. So that's that's big enough, trust me. So I'm going to sand the inside of that. I'm going to put some sander sealer on. I'll come back and show you that in a sec. Then I'll show you the sander sealing of the other bowl. So Will Yorkshire grit this after this step. That's 320 finish. And the shimmer. Look at the shimmer. Oh man, I do love it when there's this kind of refractional light in the grain. And this one is so pretty. Look at these little cat paw prints coming across here. That's 320 grit again. I'm gonna shove some, I'm probably gonna wipe it over with some Yorkshire grit and the Yorkshire grit micro refine, I think it's called. Ultra soft or whatever, <laughs> whatever it's called. But look at that, it's actually even got a shimmer in itself. Oh, that's the ice cream van. Laters. <laughs> well, that all wax, that's looking rather splendid. Got a nice wide gap there. Wide enough, I think, I hope. We will see. Measure your hole. Just approximately, that's just over 16 centimetres. Take a sheet of paper, take your rule. Six, just over 16 is eight. Add on two and a half mil, as adds, adds five overall. So it's going to be slightly larger than your hole. When I say slightly, I mean slightly. I don't mean like two foot wider. I mean very slightly. There is a reason for this. You will see in just a moment. There you go. Cut that out. Put that to one side a second while I explain. You can see our bowl there. That's going to be roughly the final size of it with our off center bowl there. What I need you to do is find a piece of wood that is not quite as wide as your bowl. On this occasion, I found a piece of holly. I've run it through the planer so it's nice and flat to go on the flat, on the flat board that I'm using. And I want enough of a gap to be able to fill down there with my finger when it's stopped on the lathe later on to make sure I'm not putting that wall too thin. So that'll glue on there in a minute, but what I don't want is any glue going down my hole. So if I put that, so it's over my hole, mark that edge, cut that. If you've got a better method, then use it. But this, has worked for me on many a bowl. A bit time consuming, but worth it in the end. So come a reasonable distance off the wood. Don't stick down the outside bit if you can help it, but not too far. I'll explain why in just a moment. And then line this bit of paper up, this open edge closest to the narrow piece of the bowl, or is it going to be your narrow piece of bowl, and stick it down. This piece of wood, Turn this round. It's going to line up with that bit of paper. Mark up where it's going. And I can use some wood glue, not getting too near this edge because I don't want any glue spurging over into there. And really focusing on the bowl, not the very corners, because they're kind of irrelevant. Oh, didn't need to come over there. Um, don't want to waste glue, do we? It's precious stuff. So on the bowl, not outside it like I've just done there. Quidge that all round and then clamp my plank on. I'll leave that for 24 hours to dry. Take the clamps off, mark up with a little bit of room to spare and cut the excess off. Ta-da, we have a blank. Now it's just a case of refining the central point on your sacrificial piece of wood. That chuck grip on the back is a bit of a nuisance. And if you do have a planer or a thickness, you can quickly run it through and get rid of that. I'm going to leave it on there for now and turn it off when it's on the lathe. Take your time doing this bit because it is definitely worth getting this just bang on. Because if it's not, then it's not going to be as good as it could have been. Right, I think 
that is my central point. This one's quite a bit heavier than the other one. The Poplar is very light in weight. So I'm actually going to use a faceplate on this. But I am going to make sure... I'm, I'm probably teaching you all to suck eggs here. But make sure your screws don't go through the sacrificial bit of wood that's on that you've glued on just now. And that is ready to put on the lathe. It is easier to plane it off with a hand plane or through a machine thickness or whatever but i've left it on just to show you so such fun and it's not too far off balance which is nice there you go just a little bit left to go then we can start shaping that round i want to get this outside perfectly round then we'll talk about shapes At this stage, it's imperative that you keep pinching the inside here. That gap that you left, run your finger inside, run your thumb alongside next to it, and keep a really close eye on how thick your wall is. At the moment, I've got loads to play with. When it gets down to the bottom, there's not a lot. So I'm gonna bring this corner in, keep a nice swoop round without, hopefully, without going through that wall but i'm going to do a lot of stop start which i'll take off the camera for you so it look like i'm just doing one continuous piece but do please stop start a lot and check now i don't think i've got enough room down this wall near the base where the bottom of the bowl is to do a large foot or any outy any whatever you want to call it recess Whatever. Why use a complicated word for something that's so simple? A foot, an outie, an innie. Easy. Right, so I'm going to do an innie and a shallow one at that. I count that as jackpot because I didn't go through. <laughs> Brilliant. So my innie fits. Haven't gone through into the bowl. And just going to smooth that off with the chisel in a moment. And then I am going to sand that. So I'll show you the sander sealering when I finish sanding and I'll show you the sander sealing of the other one which you haven't seen for a little while. 320 grit finish that is blooming gorgeous. I'll finish with 400 and go up to about a thousand possibly more depending on how many of those lines I can see. At the moment the sanding lines are relatively quite prevalent I can see them and the light if you can, but the shimmer in that wood is just outstanding. Look at that. It's almost like too bright to see. And here's the map of Poplar. Look at this light refraction around these little pips. ruining my bit of tissue. Give that a while to dry and I can de it and finish it properly. Now I just need to take that holly off, which won't take long with the bowl gouge, just nice even cuts along. And then once I get that down to nothing, we'll look at that front face and have a chat. Getting thin. If you can get it wafer thin, then you can start peeling, peeling it off. Bit of paper off. Carefully. That's well stuck on there. <laughs> right, so yeah, very cautious at this point. And there's my bowl. Lovely. Now, at this stage, I'm just taking the lightest of cuts to get this nice and even. Next trick is to sand this. Let's take the other piece off, then I'll show you the sanding method I use to get a nice, flat, even surface. All right, I've thinned that down. It's about eight millimetres thick, that now. You can hear it's starting to get a bit tinny. I thought I'd start filming now. I'll change the angle for you in a minute so you can see just how much I've got left to 
to cut off. Yeah, I might just move that tall rest of it closer. <laughs> Huzzah! Now just an extremely light cut across here until all the glue's gone. And I've got a nice flat surface. Got quite a big fat rim here. So I'm gonna drop a V in there because I do want something to gild on one of these bowls. I've not done one on the other bowl because just the way it turned out. That's a nice shallow one that I'll probably gift to somebody. But let's just drop a quick V in here. Just have a quick look where that is in relation to, there it is. Should be about a little bit more towards the centre. And then finally, just to check that the outer rim there works a little bit off balance is a reasonable thickness all the way around. Yes, it is. Let's dig out that V. And Lenore particularly hates Vs, so she's gonna hate me for this. <laughs> nice fat V there. Now, hopefully you've got the tool nice and flat across this entire rim. In the middle there, there's absolutely nothing. If you see it rotating, you can see there's nothing there. Don't do this because you might break your finger. But um, there's nothing there in the middle. It's very tempting to have it spinning while you sand just this outside rim. Maybe just this bit here. Maybe the whole thing. Maybe putting a block of wood across as I did in the previous video I did. But by far, I've done several of these since. And by far... The best way of sanding it is with a block of wood wider than it is and a length of sandpaper. I'm going to start with 120 grit, wrap that around the piece of wood and literally spend, what, five minutes per piece of paper? Well, at least until I got rid of all this, any tear out, any crooks, any nicks. And... Keeping an eye on this V on the outside edge that you're not spending too long in one area and therefore it's dipping down too far because that just looked rubbish. So you want a nice even round all the way around, including this bit around here. The one area I will obviously sand with it running, and I'll do that now actually, it's going to be just that V. That's it. Do not touch the sandpaper to any other part of this. All done by hand with that lump of wood. So just a quick wax on and a quick wax off. I skipped the bit of the sand of ceiling. Sorry, just see that all come to life. This one is going for gilding on that rim. Just the rim, not the bowl, don't panic. Because that ripple across there, you cannot lose that. Look at that, it goes all the way out through. Oh, lovely. Just lovely. Well, hope you enjoyed the instructional video. I'd love to know how you get on with making one yourself using this method. Well, I hope the video has been helpful. I hope you make one yourself and I hope you use the method I've used and it works out nicely for you. And if you haven't already, I'm going to ask, I don't often ask, but please do one of three things for me. Can you give this video a like? Can you leave me a comment to say, hey, hi, thanks, hate it, whatever. And lastly, the little button with the arrow on it that actually indicates share you share this video with a friend of yours very much appreciate the assistance the help and your subscription <laughs> anyway that doesn't look too sad at all some beauty shots to finish in a moment I already know what i'm doing with a smaller one i'm going to give it to my friend emma who had a little bit of hospital treatment recently and i'm going to go visit her next week i think she'll quite appreciate the gift of a little off-center bowl to sit on her sideboard <laughs>